Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we'll be talking about another MCMC method called Gibbs sampling. And I think this video will be pretty short. I just have a couple of things to say on Gibbs sampling. So uh, first off, why would you use Gibbs sampling? So this is only really makes sense when you're sampling from a multivariate distribution. So in most of our past videos, just to keep the example simple, we've been sampling from single dimensional distributions where there's only one variable. Gibbs sampling is useful in the case where you have two or more dimensions for the distribution that you're trying to sample from. So we're going to be working with the easiest such case with a two-dimensional distribution today. And just to keep things concrete, our goal is to sample from the two-dimensional normal distribution or two-dimensional Gaussian distribution with mean 0, 0 and this pretty simple covariance matrix. Now I'll just say off the bat that there are known ways to sample from this distribution that are not Gibbs sampling. Um, but we're going to keep things simple and assume that we're going to be using Gibbs sampling today to sample from this distribution, just to show you how Gibbs sampling actually works in practice. So if we were able to sample from this distribution, we would get some kind of plot like this. So there's a high density around the mean, which is 0, 0 for x and y, and the distribution is tilted like this because of these one-halves in the covariance matrix, and we can also show that the correlation between the x and the y variable is one-half. So you get a distribution that looks like that. And so the case when you use Gibbs sampling, so you want to sample from a multivariate distribution. Now what is the secondary case for knowing you should use Gibbs sampling? This is the most important condition. So sampling from the joint distribution, which is P, X, and Y, so that would be the joint PDF for the multivariate normal distribution, for the two-dimensional normal distribution. We're going to say sampling from that is difficult. So you may have the equation for it, you might not have the equation for it, but either way, sampling from that joint distribution, getting a pair of x and y's uh, simultaneously, is difficult. But what is easy is sampling from the conditional distributions. And by conditional distributions, I mean the distribution of x given a fixed value of y, and also the distribution of y given a fixed value of x. And as you ramp up the number of dimensions in your distribution, three, four, ten dimensions, all these conditional densities, so the density of the first variable given the others, the density of the second variable given the others, we're assuming all of those are relatively easy to sample from. So those are all sampling from a single variable distribution, which is that first variable holding all the other variables fixed. So that is the first thing to get in your mind, which is that we use Gibbs sampling for multivariate distributions exactly when sampling from the joint distribution is tricky or impossible, but we can easily sample from all the conditionals. And now that begs the question, what are the conditional distributions, so x given y and y given x for this particular example? And we can show, I won't derive it for you here, but we can show that if you're sampling x given some fixed value of y, then it's going to be rho, which is the correlation between x and y times that fixed value of y, and the variance is going to be 1 minus rho squared. And so for us, since rho is equal to 1 half, we just said that before, this simplifies to normal distribution, y over 2, and 3 fourths as our variance. So in more easy terms, what that's saying is that if you have a fixed value of y, and you want to sample x, then you can sample from the single variable normal distribution with mean y over 2, and variance 3 fourths. And since this whole problem is symmetric, the conditional distribution of y given x looks exactly the same, just substituting x for y. And so Gibbs sampling proceeds as follows, extremely simple algorithm. We start by initializing some x0, y0. So that can be anywhere on the xy, preferably somewhere that's sort of close to the center of the distribution, um, but it could really be anywhere, it's just a matter of how fast it's going to converge. And the next thing we do is we change x. So we're going to keep the y variable fixed for now. So this was our first sample. In asking for our next sample, we're going to be keeping the y variable fixed. And we are going to be sampling the new value of the x variable from this conditional distribution, which is the new value of the x variable given the existing value of the y variable, which is y0. And then the next thing we do is we sample a new value for the y variable, so y1 given some fixed value of the x variable, namely the one that we just sampled in step two. So basically what's happening is that we are getting a new x, sampling from the existing value of y, then we get a new y, sampling from that new value of x, and then we just rinse and repeat as many times, as many samples as you would like. And it's really nice because we can see this visually, at least for the 2D case in this chart here. So let's say this is your first sample, x not y not. And now we said that we're going to sample a new value from x, but keep the current value of y fixed. That's equivalent to just moving somewhere in the x direction. So this is our next sample. 
And then to get the next sample after that, we're going to swap. So we're going to keep the value of x fixed and then sample a new value for y. And then we just swap again. We sample a new value for x, keeping y fixed. And we just continue on and on like that as many times as well. And what you'll find, even though I won't prove it, if you want to prove that Gibbs sampling works, it's actually even easier than proving that Metropolis Hastings works. So you can just use the detailed balance condition again. But what you'll find is that if you take enough of these samples, it's going to be exactly sampling from this multivariate distribution here. That is, you're going to get a lot of samples around here, and you'll get less samples around the tails of the distribution. So that's Gibbs sampling in a nutshell, and you can extend this to as many variables as your distribution is. It's just that you don't have two steps here. You have, I'm going to sample the first variable given fixed values for the others, then I sample the next variable given fixed values for the others, and you just keep going. And Gibbs sampling is pretty simple. There's a lot of variance to it. Sometimes people do this sampling in order. Sometimes people do this sampling randomly. Sometimes people even sample blocks of variables given blocks of other variables. So there's a lot of directions you can go with this. But the general philosophy, the general guiding principle of Gibbs sampling is that conditional distributions are easy to sample from for this problem at hand, but the joint distribution is not. And the last thing I'll say in this video is just some pitfalls, some places that Gibbs sampling doesn't work out uh, the way you expect. And the first one is this very contrived case here where you have just 0 and 1 in the y direction and 0 and 1 in the x direction. And there's a 1 half probability at 0, 0. There's a 1 half probability at 1, 1. And there's a 0 probability here. You can probably already see the issue here. Let's say I start off at 0, 0. And because of the way Gibbs sampling works, I can only either go in the x direction or I can go in the y direction because of this trading off x and y direction principle. But you see the problem immediately. If I'm going in the x direction, I couldn't go here because there's no probability there, so I'm going to have to stay here. If I, however, go in the y direction, same exact issue. I can't go here, so I'm staying here. So I can never actually sample from this 1, 1, because I can't get there in one step. Okay, So that's one of the shortcomings of Gibbs sampling. Another one is this phenomenon called probability spikes. Uh, that is totally a term I just made up. Please don't write that in any official report. But what I mean is that you have a distribution where there is a spike in probability. So for example, consider this 2D distribution. This little green dot here is where I'm saying there's a lot of probability there. There's a very high probability density there. And everywhere else in this distribution, I've marked Ls, which means there's a very low density there. Let's think about the issues that we get using Gibbs sampling here. Let's say we're currently in a low region. Again, we can only sample in the x direction or the y direction, which means we're probably going to be at a low region again. And that's exactly the first part of the problem, is that if we're in a low region, because we can only move in the x and y directions at one time, then we're going to stay in these low probabilities for a long time. Conversely, if we are in the high density bubble, then think about moving in the x direction. You're probably going to stay in the high density bubble, because in the x direction there's no other high density areas. And also in the y direction, you're going to stay in the high density bubble. So although Gibbs sampling will work, um, theoretically it's going to take unfeasibly long to converge to the actual distribution because you're going to stay in lows and you're going to stay in highs. So this is one of the shortcomings too. Anyways, um, that was just Gibbs sampling in a nutshell. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Please subscribe for more videos just like this and I will see you next time.